Hi, you guys. Do you like my new scarf? Just kidding. It's my sister's hair. It's ridiculously long, and I love it long, and she does too, but look. It's the whole length of my arm. And the thing is, is that she just brought in, I had no idea she was going this drastic. She brought in this picture. I don't know if we can show the inspiration picture. It's like a short bob blonde. It's super short. You guys, I'm freaking out here. So this is the picture she brought me off of the internet. Okay, so the color and the cut. So here we go, you guys. Holy cow. I'm just gonna stick this in a ponytail and get out my dull, not dull, they're my sharp shears that I don't use anymore because I'm not gonna use my super nice shears to cut this thick of dry hair. It kind of dulls your shears out, so I tend to use my extra pair when I do stuff like this. Here we go, we're gonna chop it off. I'm gonna start with just like a little section because it's too hard to cut all at the same time. <gasps> Holy cow, see that was too hard. You gotta do a little bit at a time. And it's longer than I'm actually gonna cut it, but I wanna be able to be more precise when I do all that, so. Oh. Holy cow. That's a lot of hair. I don't know what to do with that now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, now we're gonna wash it and then I'm gonna do the haircut. So, all right, I'm gonna go through with the Matrix Oil Wonder Sharp Cut Oil and just mist it through. And it reminds me of Christmas. Now I want Christmas back. Just kidding, I need summer. But it does smell like Christmas. Okay, here we go. Come through the hair. Holy cow. I can't believe we're doing this. You're gonna look so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna just part it in a tea parting. Part it down the middle. Where do you wanna part it, actually? On this side? So I'm actually gonna part it where she's gonna part her hair because in the haircut picture, it was like a side part. And it didn't really have bangs, right? It was kind of yeah. just like layers. Okay, so I have it parted there, and then in the back, I'm gonna bring it back over to the middle of her head and then part it straight down the back. So in the back, I'm gonna bring it back to the middle and just part it straight down. All right, here we go. So for the back, it doesn't really show in the picture, but you can kind of just leave that up to your own opinion or interpretation. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a slight slight stack in the back, just so she has a really cute shape back here. Just a little bit right in here, and then the rest of it will kind of be like a layered, it's kind of like a layered bob. We're gonna start back here in the nape section, and we are gonna establish our length. So I'm gonna get my shears out. And right in here, I think that's a good length. And if you're not sure, you can move the hair away and see where it starts to grow on its own. It's about right there. So that's like a good, it's a good place to start. And I'm just gonna try to calm it down, push it against her neck by turning the comb over. And then a nice clean line. So rolling the comb in and around their neck like this, it really does help to get all those teeny little hairs from underneath so that they're not like longer and poking out. Because if you were to pull it out here and cut when you let it down, these hairs would be longer and push out. That's why I like to do that where you kind of roll. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a curvy shape going on here. Make sure you're being gentle with the comb. You're not digging it into their neck or scalp. It's more of just like a roll and a press with the back of the comb and not a scratch or a claw. It should not be painful at all.
And every once in a while, I just kind of grab both sides and kind of pull them down. And you can kind of just feel if one's a little bit longer. All right, so that is the length. Now we need to do some fun layering graduation in here. So you can, you can do this a few different ways. You can pull this straight out and razor it out, or you can go ahead and part it down the middle and pull it kind of out at a diagonal. And this would give more of like a A-line shape. Pulling it straight out is gonna be more of just like a, a softer, straight across layery look. So I'm gonna pull it straight out, just cause I don't think she really asked me for an A-line. Right? right? Okay. So I'm gonna take my razor now and just everything down in here will stay the same. When I lift this up, that's all still gonna be really straight line nice. Um, and straight and everything. When you lift this up, this is all just kind of heavy and nobody really needs the extra heavy thickness right there. That it's prettier if it kind of rolls in with the shape of the head. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna pull it out here and we're gonna just do some fun razory cuts. Pulling it straight out and I'm bringing it up to like right here on the bump with this bone of her head. So it kind of rolls until you get to this bone. That's about where I'm bringing my fingers. I wish I remembered the name of that bone. The occipital bone. And then I'm just pulling it out and just kind of razoring it out. And I'm kind of keeping a straight plane here. And you can see when you let it down, it has all that pretty texture in it, but it still has a solid line down in here. If it's a little too thick in the middle, which a lot of the times it is, because the hair kind of grows in like this, you can just pick it up and just kind of razor a little bit out to texture it. Use your eyeball, like just kind of eyeball things sometimes when you're doing razor cuts, you can just kind of carve in there and shape, and it's just really fun. Also, when you're doing razor cuts, make sure that you have a new blade because it's just hurt. It's just painful and ruins hair to use a dull razor blade. So make sure it's nice and clean and fresh. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I got, if you guys are wondering where I got this little like mini skirt cutting apron, it was at the Redkin Symposium and it's Velcro and I love it. It just, it's so convenient. I'm getting used to using it still because I keep forgetting and like running over to try to find clips and my scissors and shears and stuff, and my razors. But then I remember that they're all just right here. So it's nice. I'm getting used to it and I'm really loving it. Okay, so now we're going to start taking sections of her back of her head. So I'm gonna take from the very top of her head, if you lay the comb on there where it balances, that's where we're gonna go from, to the back of her ear. And I'm gonna clip off the front sections for now. So now we have all this back section that we need to do something with. I'm gonna get my shears back out. So these are the swivel double shark fin shears. And I just wanted to remind you guys, the coupon code's still good. If you wanna get a pair, any pair of shark fin shears, the Hair 101 coupon code is still active and works. So check it out. But um, now we're gonna take this section of hair right here in the middle. We're gonna do about an inch. That was a little too wide. And we're gonna do a little bit of some round layering here. So we get to start where all this fun razoring is. You see it right there. And I'm gonna go just a little bit longer and I'm just gonna kind of point cut with these shears and I'm gonna go with the shape of the head. So this is at 90. And then I'm gonna re-comb. This is at 90 from the head, 90 degrees from the head. And then when you get to the top, you need to take off that little shelf because this also needs to be 90 degrees from the head. So that's how you do round layers and you just kind of follow the shape of the head. That way when you let the hair down, you have these really soft layers 
that are really blended because you did a 90 degree haircut or round layers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that from this point over to here and then go back over here and start from here again and go over here using half of the section that I had just cut and combining it with another half inch of new hair. So it is a traveling guide. And if you lose your guide, and I'm doing these deep point cuts because I want to keep it really soft. I don't want to have a lot of blunt hair in there. You can see by pushing the comb against the hair where your guide is if you ever lose it. And if you still can't find it, then you probably need to take a smaller section. And you're just going to 90 degree angle from the head everywhere. And I love these shears because I can relax my shoulder when I'm doing stuff like this and just kind of turn my thumb. And my shoulder feels so much better since I got these, you guys. I used to have the worst knot in my shoulder all the time. So I love that. I, it took a little while to get used to kind of putting my thumb back in here and palming them. And they are a little bit wider, but I really like them. Not all of their shears are this wide if that is something that concerns you, but. Okay, so, grabbing off this section again. Okay, so this last section over by her ear, I am going to over direct it back a little bit because I want to start building a little bit more length around her face so that she can get a little bit of a curling iron there because she wants to be able to kind of give some loose waves to her hair. So this one I am going to pull it backwards, but I'm still kind of bringing it up, layering it the same. And then this obviously never got cut from the back, so I'm just going to take this down and just blend it in. I do want to keep some more length on the front so that we can razor it and play with it later. Sometimes I like, if I'm not sure about a section, I like to just leave it there because it's not hard to razor it out once it's dry and even do some fun detail. Maybe you leave it a little bit longer there or something. So if I'm ever like wondering, what should I do with that piece? Sometimes I'll just make a mental note and say, I'm gonna leave that there and play with it when it's dry. Cause I don't really know if I wanna chop it off it cause it could be something really fun. So I'm gonna go over to the other side. And this can be a little bit trickier because your guide is on the opposite side that you're cutting, but you should be able just to take smaller sections and still see what you're doing. <laughs> your ender up there yawn and this is pretty much all like virgin hair now <laughs> oh my gosh we're cutting off all the color
this last section. I'm going to just pull it over a little bit. Okay, so the basic cut is in the back. Now we're going to work on the front and sides. Oh, now it seems like you have so much hair now. Like it seemed like you had thinner hair and now it's like you have tons of hair. <laughs> that's the one thing that's so fun about cutting off all the hair. Okay. So I'm gonna take this, this section right here on the top of her head and just kind of start to blend it back in. I do want to build more length in the front, so I'm going to take this section right in here, the first inch, and now I'm going to, over direct it this way and cut an angle like this, so that I can start to build a little bit more length. You know, if I, yeah. So if you go like this, and if you pull the hair straight like this, and then cut it, it actually is longer on the front than it is on the back. See, now you can see if I pull it back over to a 90 degree, we have this angle. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm also going to be pulling the hair back over to this stationary guide right in the middle and just kind of piece at it that way. Okay, so now that top section's done. Okay, so now I need to establish the length on the bottom before I start to layer up any more of this. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna decide. It's about there, right? And I'm gonna go a little longer rather than shorter because every time I do haircuts really dramatic like this, I wanna leave like an inch of workroom to razor and texture just to make sure we can get the right look that they want because if you cut it as short as the picture looks and then you texture and razor, then all of a sudden they feel like their hair's a little bit too short. So I always err on the side of a little bit long because it's easier to cut it shorter than grow it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start back here. And this is just the perimeter. I'm just gonna kind of point, deep point cut in, blending into that back. And then I always just gradually have it increase in length coming towards the front. And that's easy to do if you just pull the hair over, direct it back, then it automatically does that for you. And then when you pull it forward, you have a little bit more length. So that's still a little bit longer than she wants it, but when I layer it and everything, it'll be okay to have more length than not enough. Okay, maybe we'll do a teeny bit more. And remember, also when it dries, it shrinks up a little bit. So that will probably be good once we get layers in and because half of this will be gone and it will be a little bit shorter. Okay, so now we're gonna do that to the other side. Try to just match those lengths up. You're gonna have to get in front of the client a few times and comb it straight. Just compare the two sides but you're going off of the guide in the back that should be pretty similar, so it's kind of where you start. And 
And this is the side of her hair that's a little bit thinner because she parts right here, leaving less hair on the side. So just be aware of that while you're cutting too. A little bit more. And then looking at her, that's about the same on both of those sides. A little bit more right there. Okay, so now we are going to layer this up a little bit. So on the sides, we're going to start taking a little bit of the back section and a little bit of her side right here. And I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna do this with the razor. So here we go. We're going to pull this out and I'm just going to take, take my hand underneath the hair like this and I'm just going to kind of raise her out her hair. And then I'm down in here too you can kind of softly, see this is where you can kind of play with that chunk that you left long too, right there. And the haircut that she showed me, the little inspiration picture, it was really soft layers, but there definitely was some shorter pieces up in here. So I like doing that with the razor. I think short haircuts really need razors a lot of the time to give that PC look that they want. And we're starting from about there, because that's where our guide is. We're just piecing it out. Already, you have you have like a little bit of a natural curl, yeah. so it's gonna kind of go like that. That'll be fun. And you can kind of play with the hair when it's wet like this and see what it's doing. I can see that she has a little bit of a natural curl, and that's how the picture was. So that's good. But if anything looks too thick or heavy or blunt, I can just kind of go in and just pencil out or carve in a little bit of texture and layer there. It might be a little bit long right in here now. All right, cute. Let's do this side. And a little bit less on this side because there's not as much hair, but still trying to keep the first layer starting where the guide shows. Look at that. Oh, I love it already. You love it already? It is really cute, wet even. Oh my gosh, your hair is short. All right, so I feel like at this point it's where we would want to start drying it up and I'm not done cutting. It needs some more texture obviously and the back's probably going to need a little bit of detail work too, but I want to dry it up and see what we have so far. So let's do that. Okay, so now it's dry and I didn't do anything but just kind of finger dry it because I wanted to see her natural wave and stuff in it and everything. So I can see right here it's a little bit heavy still and of course I knew it would be because I was being really conservative with this side knowing that it was the thinner side of her hair. Um, but now I can go back in with the razor. And if your razor feels dull at all, just change it before you dry cut with it. It needs to be really a fresh blade if you're dry cutting. And, and up in here, the layers are still kind of heavy, even back in the back. So I'm gonna go through with the razor now in the back. And I always just kind of start back here I kind of like this, this shape that it has, 
but if it's a little too heavy somewhere, you can kind of just piece it out. All right, so I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna pull this hair up. And even though we point cut it, it still has a little bit of bluntness in it going on. So I'm just gonna pencil a little bit of texture. And this is amazing for short hair, let me just tell you, especially if they have some fine hair, which hers is a little bit fine, because it just makes it feel like it's so much thicker. You can see right there, all those short pieces that I just cut, they're gonna stand up and hold all of this hair up. So she's gonna have all this body and texture throughout her hair. So this is kind of what I feel like cutting the style into the hair is. Because when they style it, they're not gonna to have to try very hard to make it look good. Blow drying it is gonna be pretty much all they need to do and then like a little bit of a finishing tool over it. You can see right here, it's a little bit blunt still. You can even take thinning shears if it's blunt and you don't really wanna take out too much with the razor. Okay, so right here, if there's a little bit of a blunt spot, I just take the thinning shears to it and that blends it right in. And right in here too. It's a little bit blunt. So right there, it looks like I need to actually There must be like a little bit of a corner here that needs to be taken off because it kind of isn't blending. Yep, there it is. I'm just gonna point cut that out. It's a little bit easier to see these things once the hair is dry. See, so that's a lot better. It just kind of lays in there now. So that's a little quick fix. If you have something that looks a little different, it's probably because it just has to have a little bit of point cutting, a little bit of love to blend it in. When you do dramatic cuts like this, I promise you guys, you are always going to need to do a lot of texturing because the hair has no texture in it unless you stick it in there. If you're retouching or like trimming up a haircut that's short, you usually already have a decent amount of texture to work with and so the trim is pretty easy. But I always find that when I chop someone's hair off, it needs a lot of texture, a lot of love to get it to look finished. Okay, this is like a long little tail here, kind of cute, but it's going to go away. There we go. And I'm gonna pencil it out a little bit too, soften it up. All right, so now I'm gonna go over onto these. I'm gonna finish the mohawk actually. So I had done some texturing from like here back with the razor. I'm gonna finish up here on the top doing the same thing. I'm gonna start up here. And you can take a pretty big section. The bigger the section you take with the razor when you're doing this kind of thing, the less hair you're gonna be taking out because if you take a teeny little section and then do that same pressure with the razor, it's gonna take out like almost all of it. So if you take a bigger chunk, then you're just gonna be texturing the back side of it and you'll still have a like more thickness to lay through the front. So keep that in mind. And then there's a little bit more here.
So I'm layering this up a little bit with the shears just because I don't want to get it any thinner because it's on this thinner side of her head, but I do notice that it needs a little bit more layers. So I'm just going to kind of blend it into the top with some point cutting. And then just over here, I'm doing the same thing, kind of just point cutting to blend in that section a little bit. All right. So what do you think? Yeah. Do a little bit of slide cutting right here. Just to frame your face a little bit more. All right, you guys. So that's, I'm done with the cut. I feel like it's good now. I still have to go through and color her. She wants to be a really light blonde, maybe with a little bit of a dark root. Um, so we're going to color it, and I'm going to do a color video, and it will be available next week. Here's a picture. Oof. However, okay. However, I will show you a before and after of the color and the cut done together right now and just be patient for next week and you can see how I did the color. So I'm not going to curl her hair right now, but you will see in the picture that it is curled and colored in the after picture. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I love doing short haircuts. I think they're super fun. You just have to keep at it and make sure you do lots of texture and, and um, don't go too short, obviously and you'll be fine. So don't be afraid to chop off hair and let me know what you guys think. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and please go and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And of course, if you want to get the Periscope app, you can see sneak previews and live action. So check that out. Also make sure you guys check out our April's live channel also, because we have been doing daily vlogs for over a year now. Well, not daily vlogs for over a year close but we've been vlogging for a year and daily vlogs for almost a whole year so go and you can get lost for hours and days over there in our videos so we will be at vlogger fair in seattle in august this year if you guys are going to be there please let me know i'd love to meet you guys and i will talk hair till the end of the day with you if you come and see me there so please make sure you come if you can and thanks so much i love you guys so much for all the support i will see you guys in the next video bye